Hello everybody. Five months ago we aspired on how to make a software based radio more faster and more efficient. And with the power of belief, with the power of teamwork and the great support from our faculty, today we present a hardware accelerated software defined radio implemented using the Zinc platform. So what exactly is a software defined radio or SDR? To understand that, let's look at radios you are likely familiar with. A radio performs mathematical operations on waves to transform them into data we can understand, or vice versa. Using hardware which depend on electronic phenomena, we can build many types of the radios you may know, such as walkie-talkies, ham radios, or anything you can build from spare parts. However, because these designs are fixed, if you want to change the type of signal you are sending or receiving, you have to get new equipment. Software radio does away with that by replacing all the devices with something simple such as a laptop and antenna. You get the flexibility of software so you can listen to a wide range of radio types, though there are performance losses as a computer has to think, while its hardware simply reacts. So we know what an SDR is, but how does it work exactly? Let's start with the basic building blocks. These are the main components of a software defined radio. An FPGA is essentially a reconfigurable hardware, faster than software, but not as efficient as performing tasks as a chip solely created for one purpose. The GPP or the General Purpose Processor is the same as the CPU in your computer. It is very good at doing one thing at a time and you need more cores in order to efficiently multitask. The third piece is the Digital Signal Processor. This component is typically made for doing complex or resource intensive mathematical operations. So this is the simplest way of implementing a radio, doing it in pure software. In between the antenna and your speaker is a GPP, with no help from anything else. This can work if you have a processor with a lot of horsepower and energy is not an issue. But if the radio modulation is extremely complex or there are power constraints, this isn't the best solution. This is a hardware accelerated implementation where the GPP offloads some of the tasking to the FPGA and the DSP. And this is how we are implementing it. We don't have a dedicated DSP chip in this design. The GPP is running a software radio platform, GNU Radio, which we are going to talk about later. Now June is going to show you our hardware setup with the Z board. This is the Z board. FPGA and CPU are on the same chipset. You can think that half of the chipset is FPGA and the other side is CPU. Our software defined radio is basically running on the CPU side through the antenna. This antenna which called RTL SDR is receiving the data from the air. Our team accelerated software defined radio on FPGA in order to get a better performance. Here's a little more about how we're going to implement software defined radio on the Z board. We're going to take advantage of the fact that we can run an entire Linux distribution on one part of the Z-Board chipset. What that allows us to do is run software called GNU Radio. GNU being open source and radio being radio. What GNU Radio is, is a set of Python scripts that tie together mathematical functions written in C++ that allow us to build any kind of radio to any kind of modulation we choose, only limited by the type of antenna we have on hand. This is GNU Radio Companion, a graphical method of building radio receive and transmit chains in GNU Radio. It allows you to use either pre-built or custom written blocks and drop them into the workspace. This is a pure software implementation of a wideband FM receiver. We start off with the RTL SDR block, which contains the code to pull signals from the antenna, perform timing corrections, and bring the signal down to baseband, aka a lot of fun stuff. Next, we go through a filter to remove high frequencies, then a resampler, then a demodulator, then uh, reduce some of the noise, multiply by constant to increase the volume, and dump everything to the sound card to play through speakers. Next, Kair will give you a closer look at the wideband FM uh, receiver block, which was the main focus of our pro project. One of the pre-built blocks available to us is the wideband FM receiver. Wideband FM being the normal sort of radio you think of as speech and music are transmitted over. This is what we work to move into the FPGA or to assist the software. A layer of Python code calls four C++ functions. 
The first two are hyper-optimized conjugate multiply and inverse tangent functions, which is how FM demodulation is done in software. The next block removes all frequencies above the ones we are interested in, and the last block reduces the amplitude of the highest frequencies in the signal we want to work with. Next, Ali is going to show you a demonstration of an FPGA-accelerated GNU radio. So here you are seeing the uh, pure software implementation. We are replacing the WVFM blocks with these two blocks. The first block is Zillion Read 32, which reads the data from the resampler, send it to FPGA, where or WBFM is now. The data gets re the process come back to Read 32, and it goes to our speaker through the audio sync. Now we do a, a demonstration of the working system. It's tuned to the local station 94.1. So I know what you're all thinking. Good job guys, you got FM radio working. Really awesome for 1933. Uh, but hold on, I'm going to tell you why this is still significant, uh, even though FM is maybe the most interesting uh, modulation. Well, why is this, this project is, uh, important? First of all, we implement a working uh, demodulator in FPGA and reduce the CPU utilization from 100% all the way to 82%, which was quite an achievement for us. Also, another important outcome of this project is our current setup. In this project, we made all the necessary connection between the CPU and FPGA on the Z board, which means it can be used by students in other courses as a playground to put their code in the FPGA and instantly check the results. Good luck to work for Exactly, good, good luck. Um, so, Kieran, what's your uh, takeaway from this project? Uh, I'm really happy we were able to successfully move algorithms from the CPU into the FPGA using industry standard tools that's just a good thing to list on your resume. Um, and that's it. We've taken concepts from every course we've had, tied it all together in one capstone. Uh, it was a success. Uh, it's been a great ride, but I think we're all really happy to get our weekends back. So thank you very much. And thanks for watching.